Hello, I'm Alexis Carucci. Welcome to Wednesday's Word. I'm here every Wednesday at 12 Pacific Standard Time, which is 8 p.m. Greenwich Mean Time. I want to thank you for joining me, whether you're here live on my Facebook page or you listen to this later during the replay. The Lord has a word for you today. We've been looking at the Holy Spirit and today we're going to be looking at the Holy Spirit and His gifts. So when you come on, let me know who you are and where you're viewing from. And please share this with others so that others can be blessed as well and can find out who the Holy Spirit is and what they have for Him, what they have for them. Thanks again for joining me. If you'd like to go to my website, alexiscarucci.com, you can uh, follow up on previous blogs or videos that I've done, um, or on my Facebook page, Living the Abundant Life. My website, alexiscarucci.com, can be uh, seen on my description for the video, in case you don't know how to spell that. It's pronounced Carucci, like Gucci, but anyway, I'm so glad to have you joining me today. Get your pens and papers out if you have an opportunity to write things down. If not, make sure you go back and listen to the replay or check out my blog that I post later in the day so that you can go through the scriptures and see what the Holy Spirit says about himself and the gifts that he gives. Well, when Jesus returned to the Father in heaven, he promised that he would send the Holy Spirit to empower his disciples, his body, the church, for service and ministry to establish his kingdom here on the earth. We see that in Acts chapter 1, verses 4, 5, and 8, and chapter 2, verses 1 through 4. Last week, we saw that the baptism with the Holy Spirit is for all believers and is a gift. Acts 2, 38 and 39. The gifts he gives are for the profit of all and are to bless others in the service of Christ. Through receiving the baptism with the Holy Spirit, we are availing ourselves of the gift of the Holy Spirit and his gifts. Welcome, Jennifer Michelle Schmick. Thank you for joining me. We're looking at Holy Spirit and His gifts today. So the Holy Spirit gives us His gifts for advancing God's kingdom. And remember, a gift is free. We don't have to earn it. We just have to receive it and open it. 1 Corinthians 12 verses 1 through 3 says we're not to be ignorant of spiritual gifts and that the gifts will always exalt Jesus when the Holy Spirit is giving the utterance. There are nine spiritual gifts of the Spirit that are spoken of in 1 Corinthians 12. And I want to remind you that they're not gifts in the sense that the believer owns and operates the gift whenever he wants. The gifts belong to the Holy Spirit. He is the one who manifests them through the individual believer as he wills. So let's read together now in 1 Corinthians 12, verses 4 through 11, what those gifts are. And I'll be reading all verses today from the New King James Version. There are diversities of gifts, but the same Spirit. There are differences of ministries, but the same Lord. And there are diversities of activities, but it is the same God who works all in all. The manifestation of spirit is given to each one for the profit of all. For to one is given the word of wisdom through the spirit, to another the word of knowledge through the same spirit, to another faith by the same spirit, to another gifts of healings by the same spirit, to another the working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another discerning of spirits, to another different kinds of tongues, to another the interpretation of tongues. But one and the same Spirit works all these things, distributing to each one individually as he wills. The gifts of the Spirit are grace gifts and are received by grace through faith just like all the other gifts from God. He gives us these gifts so that we can be a blessing to others. 
but they do not represent the maturity of a believer. 1 Corinthians 13 verses 1 and 2 tells us that we are to use these gifts in love. We're to use these gifts in the spirit and not in the flesh. Therefore, we must allow the Lord to develop our character so that we can use these gifts appropriately. They're available to every believer through the baptism with the Holy Spirit. However, we must wait upon the unction and direction of the Holy Spirit for the manifestation, manifestation of these spiritual gifts. We don't decide our gifts, we discover them. 1 Corinthians 12, 11. Praise and worship and teaching and preaching of the word bring the manifestation of the Holy Spirit more readily. Well, now let's look at the nine gifts the Holy Spirit has for us as we read in 1 Corinthians 12. I'm going to discuss them based on three categories of separation for easier understanding. And the first three fall under discerning gifts or gifts that reveal something. The word of wisdom comes under that category. The gift of the word of wisdom is a supernatural gift from the Holy Spirit. It's not natural or general wisdom that handles the affairs of life that we can ask the Lord for according to James 1 5. The gift of the word of wisdom can't be learned and it comes by revelation only from the Holy Spirit. It provides instructions or is an answer or solution for a particular problem within the will, plan, and purpose of God. It speaks to the future and manifests through the vehicle of prophecy, a word of knowledge, a vision, or a dream. It may be conditional based on obedience and it must be acted upon by faith. The word of wisdom is the best gift of all as well as the best gift of these three revelation gifts we're, we're discussing because it brings the divine revelation about the divine plan and purpose of God. Well, the next uh, gift uh, revelation is the word of knowledge. The gift of the word of knowledge is when the Holy Spirit allows you to know something that you wouldn't learn by natural means. It's a supernatural revelation of specific facts about people, places, and things in the mind of God when He wants you to know a at a particular time something in the past or present. So remember, this gift deals with people, places, and things that the Lord gives you at a particular time that concerns the past or the present. It brings access to the mind of God with the intent of releasing the power of God. He doesn't give you something just for you to know it. He gives it to you so you can do what He would like you to do with it. And that's why it's important to ask Him when you hear what He's telling you or showing you, what do I do with this, Lord? Do I pray? Uh, what is it, you know, pray for healing, lay hands on someone? What is it that you want me to do, Lord? Very often, other gifts are partnered with it to release God's plan fully, such as gifts of healings to bring healing or deliverance. The gift of the word of wisdom, uh, which provides strategy and instruction, or the gift of prophecy, speaking to salvation, restoration, and destiny. There are different expressions of the word of knowledge. The most common and easiest to develop is when the Lord speaks his thoughts into our hearts, and we speak what we hear. Sight is another way that God can show us things that were, that are, or that are to come through pictures, dreams, visions, trances, etc. It's a visual image of what the Lord is doing or about to do. He also shows us through similitude and symbols. A similitude is a likeness or resemblance. And they're both another way of expression. So you may see pictures in nature. Uh, symbols are relative to their context. And it's always how the Lord deals with you in particular, not necessarily so what one symbol means to one person may not be something that is specifically the Lord shows for you. The last gift in this um, 
category for three discerning or revelation gifts is the discerning of spirits. The discerning of spirits is when the Holy Spirit reveals what spirit is at work behind a supernatural manifestation, whether it's divine, demonic, or human. And this gift only applies to spirits. Not all supernatural manifestations are demonstrations from the Spirit of God. The discerning of spirit means to perceive by seeing, hearing, or knowing in the realm of spirits by the revelation of the Holy Spirit through spiritual eyes and ears. We see that in 2 Kings verses 6 and 17 where Elisha prayed that the Lord would open the eyes of his servant Gehazi to see in the spiritual realm the angels that were surrounding them on their behalf to do battle for them. The Holy Spirit can also reveal through the discerning of spirits the motivation of the heart. Well, there are three different types of spirits that we mentioned, divine, demonic, or human. So good spirits, you might see a similitude, a likeness, or a resemblance of God. You might see a vision of the risen Christ, or you might see the Holy Spirit, uh, who has um, seven spirits of God before the throne of God, or you might see God's angels. Well, there are also bad spirits that we might see. The devil, demons, and evil spirits. Familiar spirits are familiar with people, and they can pass on information from one person to another. They may also deal with divination and witchcraft, those type of things. Well, the human spirit, we're dealing with the motives, motives of the heart, good and evil tendencies, or the motivation behind the scene of something that you're seeing. Go to Acts chapter 5, verses 1 through 10, and you can um, read more about that. So once again, discerning of spirits is the supernatural insight into the spirit world given only to believers by the Holy Spirit. It's not the same as discernment, which is the ability to judge well or an insight into something. And this discernment is not exclusive to the believer, whereas the discernment of spirits is only given to the believer by the Holy Spirit. So there isn't a gift of discernment, only a gift of discerning of spirits. However, Believers can have and develop biblical discernment, as we see in Hebrews 5.14. If we know the Word of God and we are walking in the Spirit, we will have an inward witness if someone is operating by a wrong spirit. We can also know others by their fruit, according to Matthew 6, 7, excuse me, 7.16. The Holy Spirit who lives on the inside of us, in our spirit, will warn us, but we must be sensitive to Him listening to and hearing his voice. We discern by the word and the spirit. Hebrews 4.12, Revelation 8.14. As I mentioned in Hebrews 5.14, it tells us that we can discern um, and that we can grow in discernment. Well, we discern through our five spiritual senses, just like we have physical senses of seeing, hearing, smelling, tasting, touching, and feeling. And these senses, our spiritual senses, will help de us to discern spirits. Once we discern something, we need to ask the Lord, as I mentioned be before, what do we do with it? What does He want us to say or do? It's important to remember that whenever or however the Holy Spirit re reveals or shows us something about another person, we're not to judge them. See Matthew 7, 1 and 2 and James 4, 11. We should ask Him what we should do with the information and then follow His leading. Sometimes it's just to intercede for that person or situation. Or it may be to do spiritual warfare by using the authority Christ has given us by casting out demons. See Luke 10:19 and Mark 16:17.
The Holy Spirit gives his gifts as he wills. And if a believer tries to operate these gifts by particularly discerning of spirits by their will, it can open them up to satanic deception and a wrong spirit such as divination, etc. Well, the next category we're going to look at of three gifts is declarative gifts, gifts that say something. Let's look at prophecy first. Prophecy is the most important of these three vocal gifts. It's a message from God of edification, which means to build up, exhortation, which means a calling near or an in invitation from the Lord, and comfort to men to edify the church, and it's given by a person in a known language. See 1 Corinthians 14, 3 and 4. It is the expressed thoughts of God accessing the heart, mind, and voice of God. The Hebrew meaning of the word prophecy is to flow, such as to bubble forth like a fountain, to let drop, or to lift up. In Greek, it means to speak for another. For example, God. It is an inspired utterance that does not come from our reasoning processes or our intellect. A simple prophecy does not include revelation or foretelling, which is prediction. Foretelling may come from a person in the office of a prophet through the vehicle of prophecy. A prophet is one that is called to the fivefold ministry as a preacher or a teacher of the word and has two of the three revelation gifts plus prophecy operating their life and ministry continually. There are four levels or dimensions of prophecy I'd like to speak to today. The first one is the spirit of prophecy which bears witness to Jesus through the word and testimony. Revelation 19.10 If you've ever shared a text or worn a t-shirt with scripture on it or given testimony to what Jesus has done in your life, it is the spirit of prophecy, which means if he did it once, he could do it again. Well, the second level of prophecy is the gift of prophecy, which comes from a deeper well through the baptism with the Holy Spirit. We can stir it up, according to 2 Timothy 1.6, or yield to the spirit of prophecy and speak out from the additional power or strength of this gift as well. So there are levels of strength of the gift depending upon the measure of grace received by the person who has the gift. See 1 Corinthians 14.3. Those not called to be prophets should stay within the limits of edification, exhortation, and comfort. The third level of prophecy is from the office of the prophet, which is a person chosen by God to be his word. God has put prophets in the church, 1 Corinthians 12, 28. It is the highest level of prophecy with the most assertive utterance because they speak by the spirit of prophecy, the gift of prophecy, and also out of the strength of the office of the prophet. They have the grace to speak messages beyond words of edification, exhortation, and comfort. They prophesy with more authority than other believers who are not prophets. Their prophecies can carry revelation direction, correction, confirmation, impartation, and activation. They minister to a broader scope of needs, and their reach is full and thorough. They have an anointing by grace to speak higher, more comprehensively, and in more depth than others. Romans 12, 4 through 8. The fourth way or level of prophecy is through dreams and visions, which I'm sorry to say I don't have time to go into today, but that is such a fascinating uh, level of prophecy. So check that out on your own. Well, the Bible says that we can all prophesy according to Acts 2, 16 through 18, and that we're to desire this gift. 
1 Corinthians 14, verses 1 through 5 and verse 39. God wouldn't tell us to desire or want something if we couldn't have it. Although we can all prophesy at some level, we are not all prophets. The gift of prophecy is the best gift of all the three gifts of utterance because it is complete in and of itself, and it brings edification, exhortation, and comfort to the body of Christ. 1 Corinthians 14 verses 29 through 33 uh, describes the process of prophets who are speaking in the church and how that is to be done in order. We see in 1 Thessalonians 5, 19 through 21, where the, the scripture says, Do not quench the spirit, do not despise prophecies, test all things, hold fast what is good. And that is true. We are to test the spirits and see what they are of um, and making sure that that spirit is coming, uh, that we're listening to is the spirit of God and not coming from a demonic source or a human source. Well, the next gift in this category of those that say something are different kinds of tongues. The gift of different kinds of tongues is the most prominent of the vocal gifts and is a crucial one because it is the door into the supernatural. It's the supernatural utterance of the Holy Spirit in languages given, whether heavenly or human, that are never learned nor understood by the speaker, nor necessarily understood by the hearer. Remember on the day of Pentecost when the baptism of the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit was poured out upon the early church, the disciples that were in the upper room, um, those around them heard them speaking in their own languages. But the disciples didn't know those languages because they weren't from those parts of the world. So whether that was a gift of uh, tongues that was related to the speaker or the hearer, I'm not sure, but it can work either way. There have been times where someone has spoken in another unknown language to them and someone in the church service had said, wow, I understood that perfectly because that's my language, but the speaker didn't know it. So the Holy Spirit is the one that, that gives this gift. When we speak in tongues, we're not talking to men, but to God. However, in the Spirit, we're saying mysteries and we're magnifying God. There has been a misunderstanding of this gift, and I'd like to mention a couple of things concerning that. Some question if tongues have been done away with based on 1 Corinthians 13, 8 through 10. If you read that passage, however, we can see that knowledge hasn't vanished away, prophecies haven't failed or ceased to exist. Therefore, we can say that tongues haven't either. Heaven is the perfect place, and it is there that we won't need tongues. Remember, tongues only came in to existence in the church age after the Holy Spirit was baptized, was poured out on the early church. So it's just something that relates to the church age. We don't see it in the Old Testament. Another common error is some believe that, that not everyone, not all believers can speak with tongues based on the following verse we see in 1 Corinthians 12.30 which says, do all have gifts of healings? Do all speak with tongues? Do all interpret? But once again, here Paul is talking about ministry gifts of people who stand in the fivefold ministry, as we see in 1 Corinthians 12, verse 27 and 28, and Ephesians 4, verses 11 and 12. I would... Uh, recommend that you go and check those things out because there is a difference between ministry gifts and the spiritual gifts that the Holy Spirit is imparting. Not everyone will have these ministry gifts to the same degree of use. So certain ministers will have one gift more in use in their ministry than the other. 
Well, tongues are primarily a devotional gift to be used in our prayer life for praising and worshiping God, for speaking mysteries to God, for building ourselves up, and for refreshment. Check out the scriptures that reveal that to us in 1 Corinthians 14.4, Jude verse 20, Isaiah 28, 11, and 12. We should use this gift continually for the rest of our lives. There's also a public side to speaking in tongues, and its public use must have interpretation so the church can be edified. When this is uh, present, both tongues and interpretation of tongues, it's equivalent to prophecy, which once again is the most complete gift. See 1 Corinthians 14.5. Well, what's the benefit of speaking with tongues in our prayer language? It keeps us continually aware of the Holy Spirit's indwelling presence, which will affect the way we think and live. Speaking in tongues to ourselves and God is a means of keeping ourselves free from the contamination of the ungodly and profane elements of the world. 1 Corinthians 14.28 it also eliminates the possibility of selfishness entering into our prayer life because it's the Holy Spirit that is praying God's perfect will through us. See Romans 8.26 Praying in tongues is also a way to pray for things that no one else thinks about. They're not aware of or our natural mind does not know of concerning a matter. Speaking and praying in tongues stimulates our faith and helps us to learn and trust God more fully. See Jude 20. We may pray in tongues to thank God. It's the best way to thank God, but in the presence of people who are unlearned in spiritual things, you should also pray with your understanding or interpret the tongues for their edification. 1 Corinthians 14, 15-17 Remember, it's our spirit that is praying, not our mind. God will not use every believer in a public utterance in tongues, for that is the gift that the Holy Spirit gives as He wills. 1 Corinthians 12.11 Well, the last gift in this section of gifts that say something is interpretation of tongues. And the purpose of this gift is to provide understanding to the hearers in the church when there is an utterance in tongues so the church and all of the people receives edification or can be built up. It is a supernatural understanding of the general gist of the message spoken in tongues. It's not a direct translation and must be accompanied with tongues when spoken publicly. 1 Corinthians 14.27 We see in 1 Corinthians 14 verses 26 through 28 and verse 40 how in public ministry two or three people may speak in an unknown tongue but in order and there is one then that must interpret. The same person who speaks in tongues may also be the one to interpret. No one should speak in tongues in a public assembly if there was no one there to interpret. The Holy Spirit will let you know. Unbelievers who are present may also be convinced of the reality of the presence of God and often causes them to turn to God and to be saved. Check that out in verse, uh, 1 Corinthians 14.22. When the Holy Spirit manifests the gift of tongues and interpretation of tongues, the utterance will be edifying, inspiring, and a blessing. We need to make sure that we're in tune with the Holy Spirit so we can judge it correctly to receive it. We can also ask for this gift of interpretation of tongues in our own devotional prayers as well. 1 Corinthians 14, 13 through 15. Once again, thank you for joining me. We're looking at the Holy Spirit and His gifts. And we're coming down to the last group of three of 
the gifts of the Holy Spirit. We're looking at three dynamic power gifts or gifts that do something and many times work together. The first one we're going to look at, look at is gifts of healings. Gifts of healings are the supernatural manifestation of the healing of sickness and disease without any natural source or means. In other words, no medicine or science. We see examples of that with divine healing by the laying on of hands, anointing with oil, speaking a word, etc. Its purpose is to deliver the sick and destroy the works of the devil in the human body. It occurs through a unique manifestation of the Spirit from one person to another person in need. It is separate from people that are healed directly by believing God for themselves through faith in the Word of God. We don't see from Scripture why this gift is plural, but it could be because there are many different sicknesses and diseases. We also see that it's more prevalent in the New Testament as seen in the healing ministry of Jesus. Jesus ministered as a man anointed with the Holy Spirit without measure, John 3.34, and he healed every manner of sickness and disease, Acts 10.38. The next gift that does something is working of miracles. Working of miracles is instantaneous and divine creative acts of power flowing through a person not explicable by natural or scientific laws. It is a supernatural intervention in the ordinary course of nature and it's not only related to healing that we saw in the ministry of Jesus, but we can also see where he f worked miracles by feeding the 5,000 with uh, five loaves uh, and two fishes. Uh, we saw him turning water into wine. We see in the Old Testament where both Elisha and Elijah uh, struck the water with a cloth mantle and it divided so they could pass over. We also see that with the children of Israel uh, going over on dry land as the Red Sea parted. Those are working of miracles. Generally speaking, sometimes we think things are miracle when they're not specifically because they're just natural events that occur in the ordinary course of nature, even if we think they are just natural or even supernatural, such as the miracle of childbirth or the miracle of the new birth and salvation. These are not miracles that are related to working of miracles, which is a supernatural um, miracle that happens in an ordinary course of nature. Well, the next gift we're going to look at is the gift of faith. Well, all gifts of the Spirit operate by ordinary faith. A person must step out in faith and yield to the promptings of the Holy Spirit. But this gift of the Spirit is called special faith or wonder-working faith. It is a supernatural manifestation of the Holy Spirit given to a believer so that he might passively receive miracles. The gift of faith has a duration and is sustained until what was spoken or desired by God or man comes to pass. In other words, it's a process. It is distinct from working of miracles because working of miracles actively works or performs a miracle, where the gift of faith passively receives a miracle. But both gifts produce miracles. The gift of faith is beyond general or saving faith, which is described in Ephesians 2.8, Mark 9.23, and 11.24. Nor is it the same faith or faithfulness that is a fruit of the Spirit that comes after salvation and grows in the life of a Christian to establish him in godly spiritual character. See Galatians 5.22. Fruit of the Spirit produces character, whereas the gifts of the Spirit are for power. 
The gift of faith works with other gifts, such as to raise the dead or cast out demons. In order to raise the dead, it takes, number one, the spiritual gift of extraordinary faith to call someone's spirit back after it has left the body. Number two, the working of miracles because the body would have begun to deteriorate. And number three, gifts of healings because the person would die again without being healed. In the casting out of demons, it requires discerning of spirits and or the gift of the word of knowledge as well as the gift of faith. Well, that is the nine gifts of the Holy Spirit. And in closing, I'd like to say that we can see evidence of the gifts of the Holy Spirit in both the Old and New Testaments. In the Old Testament, the Holy Spirit came upon people only, such as uh, prophets, priests, and kings, etc. He didn't dwell inside until salvation was available after Christ's death and resurrection. The Holy Spirit comes upon believers now through the baptism with the Holy Spirit to manifest His fullness and power. Also, the gifts of tongues and interpretation of tongues began with the New Testament church on the day of Pentecost and continues to this day. To find out in more depth about the gifts of the Holy Spirit, ask the Holy Spirit to show you and bring revelation, particularly to 1 Corinthians chapters 12 through 14, which goes over these gifts. Also, if you go to my website, you will find a written blog that I will post later today that gives more content in scriptures. And if you've missed any of these blogs or videos on the Holy Spirit this month, please go to my website, alexiscarucci.com. Uh, the spelling of that is in the description of the video. Or go to my Facebook, web, uh, Facebook page called Living the Abundant Life to look for those as well. Make sure you let the Holy Spirit know you're available to be used to minister to others with His gifts, and then stir up the gifts that He has given to you and follow His leading. He gives the best gift when it's needed at the right time, because the best gift is the one that's needed at that moment. Well, I'd like to close in prayer today. And would ask that you would join me in um, asking the Holy Spirit to help us to operate and to, to seek Him and walk in those gifts that He has to give us. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you that you sent the Holy Spirit and you gave Him to us as believers in Jesus Christ to dwell inside of us that we have his indwelling presence you've given us the fruit of the Spirit to develop our character and you've also given us opportunity to receive all the fullness of the Holy Spirit and his power through the baptism with the Holy Spirit Lord I just pray that you would continue by your Spirit to bring revelation, to open our eyes to see, our ears to hear, and to stir up the gifts that you've placed within us to go out into the world to minister and to witness to the gospel of Jesus Christ and to bring his kingdom on earth. Lord, I just thank you that you are the Lord that heals, that delivers, that speaks to us, that opens our eyes to see, that gives us wisdom and strategy. Lord, that you give us everything that we need for a life of abundance and victory. Lord, I pray blessings upon each and every one that is listening, whether through the live Facebook broadcast or who watch this later, that you would bless them and draw them into a deeper relationship with the Father, Son, and, Ho and Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name I pray, amen.
once again thanks for joining me I'll be here next Wednesday at 12 noon don't forget to check out my blog later on today if you'd like more in-depth information I know for me this has been these last few months has been a time of growing and learning how to be more intimate with the Holy Spirit and how to walk with him and to stir up the gifts I'm still learning to stir up those gifts that are within me and so I'm looking forward to where some of my broadcasts he will release to me words of prophecy or a word of knowledge so a word of knowledge excuse me so expect great days ahead don't forget Pentecost is coming this Sunday May 31st on 2020 God is doing great things there's going to be a shift in the supernatural so look forward to what he's doing and get prepared until then God bless you and thanks for joining me